Good morning and welcome again. After having discussed B spline basis functions at length, we now would start our discussions on B spline segments and curves. This is lecture number 29. Let us first start with the definition of B spline segments. Given n plus 1 control points B 0, B 1 up till B n and also a nut vector capital T as T 0, T 1 up till T m. A B spline segment or curve B of T of order P is defined as B of T is equal to summation the index i going from 0 to n, the normalized B spline basis function n sub p, p plus i of t times b i. Now, if you notice, this is a very similar construction as we have seen in case of Bezier segments. There, we had Bernstein polynomials. Here, we have B spline basis functions acting as weights for each design point that a user would specify. Let us look at some graphics. So, we have a bunch of knots T 0, T 1, T 2 up till let us say T p we continue T m minus p, T m minus p plus 1 up till T m we observe this knot vector going from T 0 to T m, T 0 to T m. The first basis spline function will be n p p corresponding to i equals 0. That would be standing over the knot span T 0 to T p. The second one will be standing over T 1 to t p plus 1 and it will be nomenclated as n p p plus 1 of t. Likewise, the third one will be named n p p plus 2 of t. We keep on continuing until we plot the last basis function of which the last knot is t m and the first knot is t m minus p. This is of course, n p p plus n of t, which is the same as n p m t. Note the last knot over here t m. This p plus n index corresponds to i equals n. Now, if you notice with each of these B spline basis functions or weights, our design point B i will be associated. Now, a B spline segment is very similar to a Bezier curve or a segment, wherein the basis functions are the Bernstein polynomials. I have mentioned this before. This is the definition of a B spline curve or a segment. In a Bezier curve, the degree of the Bernstein basis functions is the same as the number of control points. Here, however, the degree or the order of the Bernstein basis function p is independent of the number of control points. In a sense, p is not dependent on n. For Bernstein curves, the degree of the basis functions is an independent choice, therefore specified by the user. The number of knots, which is m plus 1, if you recall the knot vector goes from T 0 to T m, gets determined by the relation m equals n plus p. p is the order of the Bernstein basis functions and n plus 1 is the number of design points specified by the user. 
Accordingly, the number of knots get determined. This is what I just said, the total number of basis functions n plus 1 is equal to the number of control points and p, this should be small p, is the order of the basis spine functions and hence the curve. Let us now discuss the parametric range of a B spine curve. This is a figure I have borrowed from two slides before. These B spine basis functions n p p n p plus 1 and p plus 2 up till n p plus n. How many are these? Of course, n plus 1. Now, a B spine curve definition is valid for all values of t in minus infinity to plus infinity. Let us take a look at any of these B spine basis functions n p, p plus 2 for example. Now, for values of t smaller than t 2, n p, p plus 2 is 0 and for values of t greater than this knot here, again n p, p plus 2 will be 0. So, in effect, n p p plus 2 of t is valid for all values of t in between minus infinity and plus infinity. And the same is the case for all these basis functions. And therefore, since B spline curve is a weighted linear combination of these functions, it will be valid for the entire range of t. Clearly, B of t the spline segment will be equal to 0 for values of t smaller than t 0 and for values of t greater than t m. And so, the range of t in between the values t 0 and t m seems reasonable. Let us look at a slightly more restrictive range that would be the one in which full support of the basis functions is achieved. Now, what do I mean by full support? Over any knot span T j, T j plus 1 in T sub 0, T sub m, all p b splines of order p are non zero. If that is the case, then we say we have full support of the B spline basis functions. The first such span would be T p minus 1 T p, which is this one here, where n p p and p p plus 1 up till n p 2 p minus 1 are non zero. These are p B spline basis functions, which are non-zero over this interval here. So, this would be the first span to include all p basis functions. Likewise, the last span to include all p basis functions will be t m minus p, t m minus p plus 1, which is right here. Over this not span, n p m minus p plus 1, n p m minus p plus 2 and so on up till n p m will be non-zero. So, this is the last span to include all p basis functions. So, the range of definition of a B spline segment will be given by up till t m minus p plus 1, wherein for any t, for any value of t, all p basis functions are non-zero. That means, for values of t in between t 2, t m minus p plus 1, over this interval, we will be able to achieve full support of these spline basis functions. 
and this would be the parametric range of a baseline curve. For data points 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 2 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 6, 0, and 7 minus 3, let's design a baseline segment. We have the number of data points as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Let's design an order 4 baseline curve. We have to specify the order here as an independent choice. Correspondingly, the number of knots will be the number of data points, which is 7, plus the order of the curve, which is 4, and that will be equal to 11. It is up to the user to specify the values of the knots, T0 up till Tn. Here, we choose to work with uniform knot span, T0 is 0. T1 is 1 and so on up till T10, which is 10. These are clearly 11 knots. Now, this knot span here that starts from T3 equals 3 and ends at T7 equals 7 is the range of full support. Over this knot span, for any value of T, we will have at least four out of four B spine basis functions to be non zero. We have seen this definition of B spine segment B of t equals i going from 0 6 n p p plus i of t times b i. Now, if you note b sub i is ordered, it is a vector. Here p equals 4 and this value 6 corresponds to the number of data points 7. Let us look at the graphics now. We plot these data points and the associated control polyline. Now, what you see here in blue is a B spline curve for values of t in between 3 and 7. Now, let us experiment a little bit. What we do now is we change the knot vector slightly. We replace this knot and this knot by 3. In a sense, we increase the multiplicity of T 3 to 3 and let us see what happens. The B spline in red now passes through the first control point or the design point. Let us experiment further. Now, we replace these knots T 8 and T 9, so that T 7 becomes a multiple knot of multiplicity 3. What happens then? The resultant B spline curve now passes through the last design point as well. So, it passes through the first design point as well as the last design point. What if I now make the first knot here of multiplicity 4 and the last knot as well of multiplicity 4? So, we have the first knot repeated 4 times and we have the last knot as well repeated 4 times. We do not see any change in the shape of the curve. It passes through the first point, ends at the last point, 
and it happens to be the same as the one in the previous case. Let us look at some properties of B spline segments. Now, these properties of B spline segments as in the case of Bezier segments will be dependent very much on the properties of the respective B spline basis functions. The first one a B spline curve is a piecewise curve with each component and order P segment. This is expected because each of the B spline basis function by itself is a piecewise curve. Each piece is an order P segment. The equality m equals n plus p must be satisfied. In a sense, the number of knots has to depend on the number of design points as well as the order of the B spline curve. Strong convex cell property. The B spline curve B of t is contained in the convex cell defined by the polyline B j, B j plus 1 b j plus 2 up to b j plus p minus 1. For values of t in t j plus p minus 1, t j plus p. In a sense, over each knot span, t j plus p minus 1, t j plus p, a part of the b spline curve will lie within the convex hull defined by the corresponding p design points. And this convex hull will be a subset of the parent hull defined by b 0, b 1 up to b n in a sense all the design points. Let us look at the graphics now. This is the interval of concern t j plus p minus 1 to t j plus p. This B spline basis function is n p p plus j, the last knot is t j plus p. This one here is n p j plus 2 p minus 1 of t. Now, note that this basis function ends at t j plus p, while this one n p j plus 2 p minus 1 of t starts at t j plus p minus 1. These are as we know p basis functions which will be non-zero over this knot span. Of course, this is the definition of the B spline curve we are working with. Now, try to figure the design point associated with this basis function and the design point associated with this basis function. Observe that B of i is associated with n p p plus i. So, with n p p plus j of t, the design point B j will be associated. And with n p j plus 2 p minus 1, the design point j plus p minus 1 will be associated. This one is right here. So, the curve, the B spline curve B of t for values of t in between t j plus p minus 1 and t j plus p will be lying within the convex hull defined by these p control points b j up till b j plus p minus 1. Do you know why this happens? This happens because of the local barycentric property corresponding to these p basis functions. As I mentioned b j is associated with n p p plus j and b j plus p minus 1 is associated with this basis function here. 
we have seen this before that these p b span basis functions are locally barycentric as opposed to global barycentricity which is exhibited by the bernstein polynomials now this property has consequences which we'll investigate now we continue with strong convex hull property. Let us look at the B-spine curve that we have seen in the previous example. We have the corresponding data points and the control polar line shown in black. Now, this curve here corresponds to the original knot vector T0 as 0, T1 as 1, up till T10 as 10. There are no multiple knots in there. But for values of T in between 3 and 4, a part of the curve will be enclosed within this convex hull defined by the first four design points. For value of T in between 4 and 5, the second knot span. A part of the curve will be now enclosed within the convex hull defined by B1, B2, B3, and B4. For T in the third knot span, a little segment of the B spline curve will be within this convex hull defined by the third set of four design points. And finally, for T in the last not span, the convex hull will be given by the last four design points. Now, if you notice, the values of t are in the not span corresponding to the full support. It is for these values of t, where we have all four B spline basis functions non-zero for any t. Now, if you look at the overall convex hull or the parent convex hull defined by all the design points, it looks like this. And let us superpose the previous convex hulls that we have seen. Now, you would note that if you combine all these convex hulls together, the area formed will be smaller than the area of the actual convex hull or the parent convex hull. What would this mean geometrically? This would mean that our B spline curve will be kissing the control polar line more proximally compared to a Bezier segment, which is why we mentioned that this is a strong convex hull property. A B spline curve B of t is C p minus k minus 1 continuous at a knot of multiplicity k. This is expected. Why? Because each individual B spline basis function exhibits the same property. And since B of t is a linear combination of those basis functions, it has to have the same property. At t equals t i, which is a knot of multiplicity k, since n p i of t is c p minus k minus 1 continuous, so is B t at that knot. Now, this one is the next one local modification scheme, relocating B i a design point only affects the curve B t in the interval T i T i plus p. And this is again a result of the local barycentric property demonstrated by the B spline basis functions. Like in the case of B segments, let us do the following analysis. Let the control point B i 
we move to a new position b i plus v. So, the new b spline curve c of t is given by the index k going from 0 to i minus 1 n p p plus k of t times b of k plus n p p plus i of t b i plus v. Now, this is the new location of the control point b i plus k going from i plus 1 to n and p p plus k of t times p k. Now, let us extract this term out and add to this and this to give us summation k going from 0 to n and p p plus k of t times p k plus n p p plus i of t times v. This is our original v spline curve with an additional term n p p plus i of t times v. Now, observe for what values of t would this term be non-zero. Clearly, n p p plus i stands over the first knot as t i, p plus i minus p, the last knot as t i plus p. So, for values of t in between t i and t i plus p, this term here will be non-zero. This is the interval. So, in a sense, the shape of the curve will be locally influenced only for values of t in this interval. Otherwise, the shape of the B-spline curve will remain unchanged. N p i plus p of t is non-zero in t i t i plus p. For t belonging to this interval, t i t i plus p, p of t, our b spline curve will get locally modified. Let us work with the same example. Our design points, the control polyline in red and blue here is the b spline curve corresponding to the uniform not span with all simple knots. If you recall, the knot span that we had used was from 0 to 10. Now, let us relocate this point from here to here, so that the control polar line changes a little in green here. What will happen, do you think, to the corresponding B spine curve. Now, if you notice the new one in dashed green gets locally modified in shape. Only the portion corresponding to this bar gets modified, whereas this portion here remains unchanged in shape. Now, this is a feature that we did not see in two cases, one for Ferguson curves and the second for Bezier curves. But now, with local barycentric property associated with B spline basis functions, we can think of modifying the shape of the curve locally now. Let us now implement whatever we have learned so far to try to understand how to design B spline curves. Design features with B spline curves. Now, shape manipulation of B spline curves can be done using either control points or using the knots.
when working with control points, we can use the strong convex hull property. And when working with knots, we can use knot multiplicity. We can also use the positions of knots, but that is not a good idea. Changing the position of knots can cause shape change, but it is not intuitive and therefore it is avoided. Now, for the shape change using control points, recall the strong convex hull property. The B spline curve B of T is contained in the convex hull defined by the polyline B j, B j plus 1, B j plus 2 and so on up till B j plus P minus 1 for values of T in the interval T j plus P minus 1 to T j plus P. And of course, this convex hull is the subset of the parent hull given by B 0, B 1, B 2, B n. These are the design points that you may have specified. Now, the question what if b i, b i plus 1, b i plus 2 up till b i plus p minus 1 are all in a straight line? Do not get confused. All we have done here is we have changed the index. So, the question again, what if these p control points are in a straight line? Remember, p is the order of the B spline basis functions and therefore, the B spline curve. Well, you would realize that the curve segment lying in the convex hull for t in t i plus p minus 1, t i plus p will be a straight line. Clearly, when the convex hull degenerates to a straight line, so would a part of the curve within that also. The second question, what if p minus 1 of these control points are identical? Let us say, b i is equal to b i plus 1 is equal to b i plus 2 and so on and so is b i plus p minus 2. So, only one is not identical amongst these design points. Now, you would notice that the convex hull degenerates to a straight line b i b i plus p minus 1 and the curve now passes through b i. Now, what if b i minus 1 b i equals b i plus 1 equals b i plus p minus 2 and b i plus p minus 1 are collinear. Now, try to understand the difference here between these two cases. Here, we have said that p minus 1 of the control points or the design points are the same. Now, those design points, a prior point b i minus 1, this point is prior to b i and then the last point in this set b i plus p minus 1, what if they are all lying in a straight line? The line segment b i minus 1, b i plus p minus 1 is now tangent to the curve at b i. Now, all these questions are easily answered once we understand the strong convex hull property. These are the three answers that a designer would want to keep in mind when designing B spline curves. Let us see a few cases. For the first case, 
we have picollinear data points. We work with the same example that we have been working so far with. This is our B spline curve corresponding to uniform not vector T0 to T10 as 0 to 10 respectively. Now, what I have done is I have moved this point over here. I have moved this point over here and I have moved this point over here. So, that the first four design points now lie on a straight line. How do you think the curve would change in shape? This is a new control power line now and this one would be the new B spline curve. You would realize that a part of it forms a straight segment. This is because the convex hull defined by these four points degenerates into a straight line. Now, the second case where P minus 1 data points or design points are coincident, that is they are the same. Let us look at the same example now. This was the original B spline curve. I move this point to coincide with this design point here. This one again to coincide with this design point. So, remember here this is an order 4 B spline curve. P is 4 for us, P minus 1 is 3. So, we have 3 design points which are coincident now. What happens in this case? Now, the polyline in green is a new control polyline. And this is a new B spline curve. You would notice now that it passes through this point, which is a multiple design point now. The third case, where we have P minus 1, in our case 3 coincident design points or data points with points on left and right collinear. We work with the same example. We merge three intermediate design points together. So, as to take care of this condition here. and we move the next point to lie along this line. Once again, we move this point here, so that these three points are collinear, with this being a multiple design point. This is our new control power line here and this is the new shape of our B spline curve. Notice that not only is the curve passing through this multiple design point, it is also tangent to it, rather tangent to the control power line. Clamping using data points. Now, just observe what is happening here. I can make a B spline curve pass through a design point if I raise the multiplicity of that design point suitably. We use the same concept here to clamp our B spline curve at the two end points. We are working with this example throughout.
uh, move the second design point to coincide with the first one, the third design point again to coincide with the first one. So, this is my new control power line in green and this is the shape of the resultant baseline curve. Clearly, it passes through the first point. What is the multiplicity of this design point? Let us go back and figure this out. Two design points coinciding, three design points coinciding. The multiplicity of this control point is three in this case. So, remember we are working with p minus 1 multiple design points. Because of this, that our new v span curve passes through the first design point. Let us experiment further and let us merge the last three control points together. So, as to raise the multiplicity of this design point by 3 as well. This is our polyline and the curve in blue is the new V spline curve. You would not be surprised that this passes through the last design point as well. How about designing closed V spline curves using control points? So, so far we have been working with open curve shapes, in that these curve shapes were not forming loops. Now, let us design V spline curves to form the desired loops. And of course, we are going to be using control points. Let me move one of my data points from here to here. Another one, so that this point here has multiplicity 2. And now, this point has multiplicity 3. The next design point goes to a new location. This is another one, still another one. We keep on doing this. Now, watch carefully what is happening. I generate a new design point to coincide with the first one, which already had multiplicity 3. Second one going there and third one going there. So, effectively what has happened? Now, the first design point had multiplicity 3 and now the last design point also has the same multiplicity. This is our control power line which forms a closed polygon and this is the resultant V spline curve. It is because of the first design point and the second design point both having multiplicity of 3 that the curve passes to this point. Now, the question, why is it that the curve is tangent to this line, if it is? Let us go back to the previous example. Once again, this design point had multiplicity 3 and so did this. Now, if you bring this one here to coincide with this one here and imagine that if you had another design point somewhere here maybe, so that you could have 
made one, two, and this one here collinear, then you would have expected that the curve not only would it have passed through this design point, it would also have been tangent to this control pole line here. Something very similar is happening in the next example, right here. You would need a little bit of practice to understand this a little better. I would encourage you to get some. Let us move forward now and discuss shape manipulation using knot modification. Well, this is something that I have mentioned before that changing knot positions can also cause shape change, but it is not intuitive and therefore it is not recommended. Rather, change in curves shape if you use multiple knots is predictable. Recall at a knot i of multiplicity k, the basis function n p i of t is c p minus 1 minus k continuous at that knot. Whenever we are discussing these plan curves, you should keep in mind the basic definition. A B spline curve, be it a basis function or any other curve, is always C P minus 2 continuous if it is of order P or degree P minus 1. For simple knots, that is for k equals 1, C P minus 1 minus 1, C P minus 2 continuity condition is satisfied for a baseline curve. Now, here is another one. At each internal knot of multiplicity k, the number of non-zero or the p basis functions is at most p minus k. By this time, you should be able to figure this property out. All you need to do is catch the respective baseline basis functions. Okay, let us see what we have with multiple knots and barycentric property. Let us say we have a set of knots going from T0 up till T10, all simple knots. Correspondingly, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, order 4 baseline basis functions. How would you name, for example, this one? This would be N 4 4. Let us concentrate on these red shape functions for now. The B spline basis functions are named N 4 4, N 4 5, N 4 6, N 4 7 up till N 4 10. You would know now how to do so. So, the red ones here are N 4 6, N 4 7, N 4 8, and N 4 9. Now, for value of t equals t 5, which is right here, N 4 9, this basis function is 0. Now, our interval of concern is T5, T6. Let us concentrate on this interval for now. We have four B spline basis functions, which are non zero over this interval, and because of local barycentricity, all these four functions will sum to 1. At T5, that is at T equals T5, N49 will be equal to 0 right here. So, one of the B spline basis functions will get dropped from the summation n 4 6 at t 5, n 4 7 at t 5 and n 4 8 at t 5, they will now sum to 1. Let us delve further. similar case, 
but now we have t4 equals t5 because of which n4 8 will be equal to 0. That would make 2 are the basis signs sum to 1, n4 6 at t5 and n4 7 at t5. So, observe how not multiplicity is helping us manipulate the local barycentricity property. These are force n4 6, n4 7, n4 8 and n4 9. Let us go deeper now. Now, we have n4 6, n4 7, n4 8 and n4 9 shaped slightly differently for different cases. Now, we have t 3 equals t 4 equals t 5 and this results in n 4 7 equals 0. This would mean that at t equals t 5 only n 4 6 will be equal to 1. Okay, so, what has just happened? Let me go back. What we did was we tried to raise the multiplicity of this knot over here T 5. We started bringing the knots on the left towards T 5 one by one. So, at one time we had T 4 equals T 5, at the other time we had T 3 equals T 5 and so on and we observed what happened to this summation over here or what happened to the local barycentricity property. So, for simple knot n 4 9 is equal to 0. So, we have 3 basis functions summing to 1. When t 5 has multiplicity 2 that is when t 4 is brought to t 5 from the left, the other basis function gets dropped off n 4 8 would be equal to 0. Consequently, 2 of the basis functions now will sum to 1. We raise the multiplicity of t 5 by 3 by bringing t 3 also to precisely lay over t 5. This would result in n 4 7 to be equal to 0 because of which only n 4 6 at t 5 equals 1. How would this help? Now, you would observe that the control point associated with n 4 6 of t is b 2. So, the 6 index here is p plus i if you recall p is the order of the basis functions that we are using to construct our b spline curves. Because of this local barycentricity property now you would expect that our spline curve would pass through B 2 for this example. In general, if T i plus 1 equals T i plus 2 equals up till T i plus p minus 1 with T i plus p minus 1 having multiplicity p minus 1, only one basis function n p i plus p will be non zero over t i plus p minus 1 rather at t i plus p minus 1. And of course, from the barycentric property n p i plus p will be 1, which would mean that the b spline curve will pass through the design point b i. Let us now consider an example where we had designed a closed B spline curve. Recall how we had specified our design points. So, we had three design points precisely laying over each other at the start, the fourth one, the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and three 
design points coinciding with each other at the end. So, in a sense, we had 12 design points. I would want you to do this exercise with me. Okay, so, let us come back. So, we had 12 design points. The order of this closed V-Stein curve is 4. So, we should have 12 plus 4, which is 16 knots in all. So, this closed spline is the result when we specify T i equals i for i going from 0 to 15. So, if you notice, these are 16 equally spaced knots. You would guess by now what the range of the full support is for values of t in between 3 and 12. Now, at this time, with this knot span, I would want you to sketch all the baseline basis functions that have been used to design this closed baseline curve. You might want to take a moment to do that. While you were busy sketching your baseline basis functions, I was sketching mine. So, this is the knot span T 0 up to T 15, uniform knot span with all simple knots at this time. This is the range of full support from 3 to 12. And these are my individual baseline basis functions N44, N45, N46, N47, N48, N49, N410, N411, N412, N413, N414, and N415. Now remember, an element in the summation when we define our baseline curve NP p plus i times p i. Try to associate data point p i with the corresponding v spline basis function. For our case, p is 4. So, b 0 is associated with 4 4, n 4 4, b 1 with n 4 5, b 2 with n 4 6, b 3 with n 4 7, b 4 with n 4 8 and so on. And in the last, we have B11 affiliated with N415 from B0 to B11, we have 12 design points. Of those 12 design points, three of the first ones are coincident here, and three of the last ones are coincident at the same site. Though this is a general figure, for our example, B0 equals B1 equals B2 and B9 equals B10 equals B11. Three of the last and three of the first design points are coincident. Now, if I would want to have my B sign curve pass through this design point, 0, 0, which is 3 plus 4, the fifth design point here. The knot t 4 plus 4 minus 1, which is t 7, which is equal to 7, should have multiplicity 3. That means, the knot values t 5, t 6 and t 7, they should be the same as 7. So, my fifth data point or design point is here and I would want my B spine curve to pass through B 4. That would mean that I will have to make N 4 8 equal to 1. And I will have to do that by raising not multiplicity. Now, let us concentrate on this knot span T 7 T 8, over which 
and for 8, and for 9, and for 10, and n for 11 will be non-zero because of the local barycentricity property. These four basis functions will sum to one. Now at t equals t seven, n for eleven automatically gets dropped off. Its value is zero here. So at t equals t seven, n for eight, n for nine, and n for ten. These three they sum to one. If I bring t six to t seven, n for ten becomes zero. And further, if I bring t five to t seven, n for nine also becomes zero, making n for eight equals one at t equals t 7. This is when our B spline curve will pass through the data point B 4, which is the fifth data point in our case. Once we do this, this is how our new closed B spline curve looks like. Now, try to work this thing yourself. For this closed spline, to pass through this data point here, 8 0, which is this one, the not t 7 plus 4 minus 1, which is t of 10, which is equal to 10, should have multiplicity 3, that is t 8 equals t 9 equals t 10 equals 10. Using the similar exercise, that we did on board, you might want to confirm this. So, notice that this is our fifth data point, sixth, seventh, and eighth data point. This corresponds to B7. I'll let you work on the details. I'll just give you the final result. Note that this result does not have not T 7 with multiplicity 3. This is a different case.